It's not just polar bears and penguins. It's not just disappearing icebergs and a rising thermostat. There's a human cost to global warming, one that can be lost in the shuffle. The problems that cause global warming have been multiplying for years, and the solutions have been few and far apart. It is not enough to just have a brief passing knowledge that the weather around us is changing, to realize that the smog pouring out of the smokestacks is contributing to the destruction of the world around us. The details of the issue must be understood. The ways in which the changing climate affects our everyday lives and those of the unborn future generations. We, are, we have lost sight of children who will live 50 years from now, 100 years from now. What kind of a planet are we living for them? Do they have the right to see a polar bear in the wild or see you know, birds in the wild or whales or fish or whatever? Or are we just saying, well, you can only see it in the zoo? The question is this, are we to take responsibility and educate ourselves about global warming and lead the charge to help alleviate the problem? Or are we doomed to wallow in ignorance and rotten floodwaters and pass the buck to the next generation? And just what has Elon University done to help lessen its imprint upon the earth? As one could see from these charts provided by Elon University in conjunction with its sustainability mission statement, progress has been made despite the fact that the program is still in its infancy. Professor Angel proposes that there are still some issues with the plan, one of which is the matter of Elon's growth and need for more and more energy, and another which revolves around the attitude of Elon's students. It's hard to read. I see some students, are, I see a minority who are interested, and uh, I, see, I think apathy for the most part, apathy or indifference. And so these buildings are going to, and dorms are going to take more and more energy. They're going to cost more and more to heat and cool. <laughs> and so the, the bottom line is going to cost more and more to run this fiscal plan of this institution. And that's going to be reflected in tuition bills and, and costs. Like I have people come up to me and they realize that, I'm, um, that I do believe that global warming is real and I do believe something has to be done about it. But they're like, it doesn't feel cold outside or warm outside right now. You know, it feels pretty cold. And it's not just the the day-to-day -day, um like it's not going to go 10 degrees in one day but it's also obvious that the issue of global warming does not just revolve around the science and small yearly changes in temperature there's also a crucial political element one that hits people's fundamental beliefs and involves the most important of politicians it, for some reason the republican side along with the conservative side the, and just christianity in general has been brought together with um, just these ideas that science is wrong and uh, of course global warming isn't happening and we should just continue to live our life and not think about the environment. So I don't know where these two ideas cla came together where um, because originally religion and science were both working to the same thing and they still are working to the same thing, trying to find the answer to life's questions, um, how things work, how things are made, everything like that and what's really going on in the world. Don't look at the messenger, look at the message. It's very easy when you see Al Gore, you say, oh, Al Gore, he's liberal, he's this, he's this, and then whatever he has to say, you dismiss it. And that is not, uh, that is counterproductive intellectually. When it happens, when the reality comes home, the problem is people don't believe science anymore. They do, they, they do not believe scientific evidence, and they cannot follow scientific reasoning to a conclusion. And when it happens, they're going to react in religious terms, you know, as if it's the end of the world or that this is God's punishment or something. They're going to react irrationally. They're going to turn to strongman dictatorships, and the, the, the public response is going to be irrational and I think very dangerous. Because people will not know how to, how to cope with the sudden loss of petroleum. When the administration came into office about seven years ago, the first thing they did was to say, wow, well, you know, we're out of Kyoto. We don't want to be a part of Kyoto, which, in a sense, uh, uh, it was justified as an economic reason not to be part of Kyoto. Mind you, the Kyoto thing was a process. You know, it was a process, and instead of withdrawing completely from it, that the United States could have played a significant role in encouraging countries like China, India, where we have this uh, explosion of economic growth. Uh, to be part of the deal, but by abdicating, then uh, really nothing is achieved. It is always like right now we're back to square one. And the interesting thing about Kyoto is that Kyoto was initiated by the Americans to begin with. So what are the alternatives? What can we do to slow global warming? There are countless ideas tossed about, solutions that range from increasing sacrifice or waiting for new technologies. 
there's big hype around uh, ethanol right now and the use of corn as a renewable resource, but we have to look into the fact that although this corn is being put into your cars and such, uh, it actually costs money and then gasoline is used to run these tractors to, pl to plow the corn, plow the fields, harvest the corn, and so actually gathering the corn might take up more energy than the actual burning of the fuel. So overall, you are causing more pollution from the renewable resource. So more research has to be done about how much the input energy that there is based on the output of energy and if it's actually doing good for the earth. We have the technologies to make it happen. It's going to cost money, obviously. And often that cost is seen as a, a sort of a liability to solving the problem. But then what is the alternative? The alternative is if we continue on this path that we're all going to end up uh, in a much worse situation uh, than now. So I think it can be done, but there has to be uh, a willingness to genuinely address the issue as a common human issue as opposed to a political issue or an economic issue. I went to Haiti this summer and they uh, one, someone from the United States bought them a generator there, and they don't have the means to get the gasoline for it, so it just sits in the middle of this rural village and it never gets used. $10,000 generator. When, if that money went to buying solar panels, per se, they have so much light there that this could power the town for years to come. Um, I'm a big fan of electrical power, electrical energy for, um, <coughs> powered by, renewable, by renewables for automobiles and uh, industry. Global warming will also affect employment worldwide. UN officials have recognized that a changing environment will force many jobs to fade. Fishermen and hunters in the Arctic are already having a difficult time because the climate no longer supports some of the animal life that kept their businesses running. While many jobs are being lost due to global warming, some argue that jobs in alternative energy are also being created. One of the things that is not stated is that when you go green, for example, if you go green, that there are economic incentives. There are jobs. You can create new types of jobs. You can create new types of technologies and so on and so forth. So that it's not just all or nothing. You're just moving from old way of doing something to a new way of doing it. Businesses don't like the unforeseen any more than we do and so they, they want to have a predictable environment, business environment. So they're, they're taking the steps to make sure that they will be sustainable, that they'll be in business in the future. I think it, it still hasn't registered that your lives are going to be changing drastically. The change is imminent, and we can't tell what form it's going to take. But it's probably going to be some kind of crisis. And my best guess is that it will be a um, major, major energy um, disruption of some kind, caused by a political or natural event.